Good morning and welcome back to the Film School Chronicle. I am your host Carmelo Keating and joining me today as we introduce him very recently is Alessandro Coran. How are you Alessandro? I'm pretty good. How are you Carmelo? That's good. I'm good. Thank you very much. So today we are joined by our next group of uh, third year grad slate key creators. So we are joined by Cindy Ford, the director and Sky Trainery, the producer of The Maze of the Machiavellian Minotaur, which is a TV studio grad slate project. How are you this morning? Pretty good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, let's yeah. go. <laughs> I'm all right. Yeah. Chaotic drive, but we made yeah. it. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for joining us this morning and making it here. Um, so, give us an overview. Tell the listeners, tell the viewers, what is the maze of the Machiavellian Minotaur? Well, um, on the practical side of it, it's a TV pilot episode to a game show that we wanted to create. And it's pretty much my brain is foggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we pretty much we've done a lot of TV, so we did TVOB, outside broadcast for those who don't know, and TV Advanced, and uh, we've been working together as a director producer duo for a while in those, and we were like, let's do it for Grad Slate and do something different. Yeah, no, it is very different. Um, so in case the, the viewers and listeners don't know, it is actually the first TV studio grad slate project that Griffith has, has ever made. As to I our knowledge, yeah. 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 Oh, wow, that's very, that's very impressive. Yeah. Um, so just in the, more of the context of the story, because, um, you know, it's a game show, um, did you want to tell us a bit more about, you know, what the, the, the story of the show is and, and how it works, what the games are like, that sort of thing? Yeah, so essentially our antagonist I guess you could say is this minotaur who's been like traumatized by humans his whole life or whatever so his way of getting back and getting his revenge is putting humans like off the street <laughs> into his mansion and he just we have three rooms where the contestants sort of have to make their way through puzzles and games and riddles so it's essentially like escape room-esque so it's sort of like they come in and they run through the rooms and Minotaur is like tormenting them, giving them trouble. Trouble, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, nice, <laughs> very, very nice, yep. um, Yeah, so it's basically just a fun little, fun game show that's yep. just, it's similar to, um, one of our inspirations was Trapped. Trapped, so yeah. The yeah. show that I feel like everyone in our generation knows, yep. so it's... It's very much like that, but it's really, really fun as it's sort of like live recorded slash post edited. So it's really interesting. Mm. And you don't actually trap the viewers in the room, uh, do, do you? No? No. 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 Oh. I mean, well, they can get out if they want, but yeah. like. <laughs> oh. yes. yes, everything is with consent. <laughs> <laughs> we like consent. Yes. And how did you go about casting a Minotaur as well? Was that was that difficult to find? They're rather rare these days. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, like, the hair just wasn't as long sometimes. It's just like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> Very difficult, but uh, we got there in the end. The yeah. colour wasn't right. It was just... <laughs> We got there. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, so you have obviously both shot the um, the POC, now the Proof of Concept. Um, did you want to talk to us about, you know, that process, what that was like, how you, you um, anything you learned from that experience uh, going into principal photography coming up in a few weeks? I think the biggest challenge was that um, a lot of our crew it, haven't done TV since first year, and that's what we found to be really troublesome and we had to organize our own refresher workshops because the ones that were provided by the school were obviously tailored to the roles and what you do on a film set and not in the tv studio so it was very much it was very difficult to get everyone up to speed very quickly and be like okay do you know what you're going to do in there and um during poc we found out that yeah it, there was some trouble and people were still getting their footing but um, overall, we were successful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, you could definitely see that everyone was on a learning curve because it was just, they haven't done it since first year. Yeah, and that's that same for us, even though we're second years. Um, and of course, you know, the viewers and listeners don't know this yet, but we are actually involved in the, in the production yeah. ourselves. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, you're right. TV studio is, is it's much less um, common in the, in the mm -hmm. curriculum. 
Um, what's what's it been like? What's that challenge like? You know, creating something that's so different, uh, and you know, there's perhaps less people who are familiar with it or, or less fond of it. Um, what's that been like? I think one of the one of the most um, difficult things is that we come across these barriers constantly. <laughs> And one of the first ones was that I did the pre-production development course in Try3 and um, I obviously got Cindy on board, but she wasn't in the course, but she was my director. So um, she'd come in for when we'd present and pitch it to the tutors of that course and they just, the whole time, they were like, we can't see what you're doing. We don't understand. frustrating yeah and it was just like we're like we don't know how to convey to these people who only think in short film a game show yeah like Mm. there's a game Mm. people go in they do it (laughs) we can't predict what they're going to do like it's an unscripted thing to do like we can only assume some things and prepare for certain outcomes so it's like instead of one solid script we have like five branches of if they do this we have to do this if they do that we have to do that yeah Yeah. it's difficult just being able to communicate it sometimes just because yeah the nature of it and it's just whether or not they understand if they're in that headspace of something that's not scripted because you know ppd and all the other grad states that's ever been they're so heavily focused on like the performance and the story and the script and the way it flows but Ours is completely different from that. So having that focus in grad slate, you know, conversations, it's hard for us to sort of come in and do that. But I guess the way we work around that is we collaborate heavily within our little group, especially between Sky and I, and we talk to the people that we need to talk to at uni to get what we need and yeah. what, you know, what we required to be able to pull this off. 100%. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first, to my knowledge, uh, grad slate done in TV, like a TVC grad slate. Yeah. 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 Um, I was wondering, because like there's like such a contrast between what a setup is on a short film and what a setup is like in the TV studio. How did you guys go, like how did you guys um, come to like setting up and like making that set and sort of building that world? Yeah, so I guess building the set would be quite similar to film as we had just flats and we had a production design team that filled the space. But in terms of lighting it and all that sort of thing, so in the TV studio, there's the lighting rig up on the roof. So that's all controlled through the studio, the TV studio itself. So we have like a lighting panel. So that's where all the lighting gets controlled. So even with cameras and setting those things up on the day, it was, it's a different thing where it's not, you set up your camera and your tripod and you start recording on a SD card. It was more like the studio cameras get filmed through the TriCaster in the studio. So it's yeah. just a whole lot of, what's the word? Like it's all just connected in itself with the studio to the actual floor. So setting up was quite, it was a process, but you know, <laughs> it was something that we sort of had to learn as like this is something new no one's ever done it before so it's sort of a lot of trial and error with what we were doing especially in POC right mm, yeah um, and the TV studio like format is, is or like the way that things are done is rather unique uh, in that you know the, the, the picture and the colour and stuff of the image that's all edited live um, mm. is it not in the, in the studio yeah um, so has that also been difficult to try and you know uh, convince uh, the, the tutors and stuff to be on, on your side when you're you know, you're having a project that, whilst it will be edited um, in, in the post-production period, most of the editing is occurring uh, in studio, if I'm correct. Yeah. So uh, we have our vision switcher. So when we take all the data off, we not only have the ISO reels, so that's the isolated footage that each camera has, and then we have the vision switching reel. So we take all of those and we can give them to the editor and say follow the vision switching reel and if there's anything slight changes where the switcher was a bit slow or a bit too fast on things we can go back and fix that up there is a lot of room for editing especially if we do want to color grade and that sort of thing so on first look it does seem like there's no editing to be done but 
you know, we've been given a whole trimester of editing time. So we're right. figuring out ways to utilize that. So for example, graphics, usually you would um, put them in through an alpha channel while you're recording. Whereas with us, we've just sort of gone, let's just put it in in post because we have that much time. You have time. the post time. Yeah. 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 So we're just trying to refine our processes to make it as easy as possible for us to do production so that editing also has something to do mm. rather than us being finished by like week five or try to and being like, yeah. can we go screen this now? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is still in post. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ideally, I guess in a TV world, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have so much editing time. But because that's what we have to do, because that's the greatest like timeline, we just have to, yeah, work around it. Usually, it would be like a lot more pre-production time, and then everything would be there ready, like in an alpha channel or the graphics, all of that sort of thing would be done and ready. So you would just stream it live or just live record, and then you're pretty much done. A couple little fine tunes, but then you're finished. Yeah. So it's it's a strange timeline, but. Yeah, we're yeah. working with it. <laughs> so that's probably pretty much like the biggest deviation from the traditional like TV studio thing is that you're actually having to edit it, you know, because yeah. it's not being released live, uh, mm. unfortunately. Although that would be cool. That would be yeah. awesome. That's that's <laughs> that's a dream. <laughs> that's a dream. It's what we did in Try Three with TV Advance. Yeah. So that was a live broadcasted show, and we loved that so much. Yeah, I wanted to talk to um, you guys about that for a second because I was um, fortunate enough to be a a live audience member, I think, for the, the pilot episode. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that show is fully completed and it's actually available online to, to view, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did you want to tell the audience a little bit about you know that project so they can go have a look at your work uh, before the Maze of the Machiavellian Minotaur launches later this year? Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, there is a Facebook with all the live streams. Uh, it is under the name Life, which is an abbreviation. Please excuse my language. Life is fucking exhausting. <laughs> that is the name of the show. <laughs> um, and we had, what, three directors? Uh, there was Cindy, she did, you did the pilot and the second episode. Yeah. And then we had um, our second director do the third episode and our third director do the fourth and fifth episode. So they were all directed by different directors, but they all collaborated to kind of flesh out all the ideas of each episode. And life goes over. We wanted it to cover like uni age students, uh, people leaving to graduate, people who are coming into uni. So um, our pilot episode uh, was about financing. Um, our last episode was about travel, travel. <laughs> <And> so <What's> <laughs> there was a whole range of um, topics we covered in a very short span of time and we had like four or five mm -hmm. weeks of pre-production to get it all together and it was really funny because only one person came in with an idea when we started and it was like <laughs> okay let's take it and run. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> It was a wild ride yeah. for sure because after we got all that pre-production up, we did the pilot episode the week before mm -hmm. and then we were like, okay, we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and from there we did the five episodes. And they were um, all half hour as well. Yeah. So all of that production in, yeah, four weeks, really. Yeah. Yeah, and what, what, like... right. yeah, so what was the shooting schedule like for your actual, like, um, those, those half hour episodes? Oh. As, as I recall, they were almost back to back. They were back yeah. to back. Yeah. We, were, we were Monday to Friday. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty much what we did. And we still came in because we had a production office because in Try 3, nobody's on campus. Right. So we can have we a large room <laughs> that everyone can go to anytime during the week. We pretty pretty much lived yeah. there. Yeah. Like, we made like a bed out of the chairs and put a pillow at the end. <laughs> that's, like, oh. that's not even a joke. The people yeah, yeah, were having yeah. naps in the production yeah. office. <laughs> It was crazy. You know, every night we just, we were there from what time? Uh, like, I swear we were there from at least 9 or 10 a.m. in the yeah. morning just preparing and finalizing the script. And then we wouldn't start shooting till about, I think it was 7 because it was technically mm -hmm. M rated. So right. we had to have it on at a certain time. And I think 7 to 7.30 was the time and rated shows are usually broadcasted on your usual TV channels. So 
by yeah. that standard, we had to start at seven, and so and we went till seven thirty. Yeah. So by all means, it sounded very much like it was you know as accurate to the industry. Yeah. as it could be and, and you were actually working with Andy uh, last name redacted uh, who, who has worked quite uh, extensively in, in, in Australian TV uh, and he's also working with you guys on yeah. amazing yeah. the Machiavellian we are musical. so lucky for yeah yeah what's, what's that been like actually having someone who's got that much TV experience to work oh, with oh it's been awesome anything that we need or have a question on or just some sort of guidance he's there and he's so willing to give up his time he's honestly just like angel yeah we like, couldn't do it without him honestly yeah without him we'd be lost because for sure i've got him on speed dial yeah. he, he calls me all the time <laughs> like it's almost like like i'm his partner or something like it, it's ridiculous <laughs> because he'll ring me up and be like hi andy <laughs> how you doing what's up now <laughs> what's happened <laughs> So you're, wrong. <laughs> you're doing the problem solving for him or he's doing the problem solving for you? Both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sandra, I feel like you were itching towards a question. Oh, well, I, I was actually wondering um, for any second years or first years that like might be looking for the inspiration for both life and uh, the maze coming out soon. How do you go about growing an audience? Uh, hmm. I mean, it's it's a lot of social and yeah. just sort of chatting to people. So mm. we recently did a internship with the World Science Festival and we met a lot of creatives in that space and you know we told everyone about yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. it's just spreading the word the word and you know, getting even Andy's contacts, all those sorts of people. So it's just like talking to people where you can and like garnering that sort of interest. 100% plus socials which yeah we need to do as well <laughs> yeah um I've been a little lax on socials at the moment just because it's a tv show and at this point I'm like okay we don't exactly have to hype it up now yep. but I want to hype it up for the screening we we do right. so um We'll bring up the socials later, but yep. I'll be hyping it up on the socials next trimester and doing a lot of marketing because there'll be just so much free time with editing happening that I will just go ahead with marketing and go mad with that. And the screening is like a whole different story. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got We've big got plans. plans. <laughs> would you say that socials would be a crucial point or where is your sort of stance on that? Definitely. I mean for life it was huge it was like um what well, we ended up with over a thousand views on our f pilot episode yeah. mm. last time i checked <laughs> it's been a while since um but it was like what well, we only had a crew of about maybe 20 something like that it, was, yeah. it wasn't large but um it was like you know you extend out to your families maybe that gets you close to 100 200 people mm. but it's like it was just getting shared all over the place and it's like once that kicks off it's like wildfire so it's just finding those people who will just keep sharing it and they will usually share it to people who are more prone to sharing things yeah. so you just got to be able to spark that wildfire yeah get that right engagement yeah. yeah, and and hopefully this episode of the podcast will be a very good teaser to you know, get people <laughs> yeah. interested uh, well in advance um, so we're almost uh, coming towards the end of the episode, but I did just want to talk about one more thing when it comes to the, the you know, POC versus uh, live studio thing, and that is with the actors. Mm. So obviously I know that um, we didn't have our actors for the POC because we filmed some different things, but um, because the actors have to, you know, experience it for the first time. Um, so how, how are we feeling about that? You know, is there a lot of anticipation for, you know, what that's going yeah. to be like when they finally get in the studio? Especially or? from a director standpoint, I'm sort of like... How do I go about this? Yeah. <laughs> but again, like, that's just collaborations, like seeing how we can work around it. But yeah, principle is going to be very interesting. So for POC, what we did is we actually shot sort of like examples for the games, as you would see well, in like Trapped, <laughs> where yeah. before the game runs, you have people go through it that know what they're doing. So it shows the audience what's going to happen. So the audience is always in the know before the contestants. So then if they stuff up the audience, like, what are you doing? So that's that excitement factor. So yeah, for principle, it's the full live recording of the actual contestants going through the game. So it's just going to be a whole lot of 
letting them know what needs to happen, where they need to be, not scripting it, but yep. like, like guiding them like little hamsters. Yep. So it's just going to be like, right. like it's going to be so much fun and such a great experience. But yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of how am I going to approach this? Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. We'll get there. And so. that's where my planning skills come in. And I'm like, here's yeah. the list of rules. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's like our thing. It's like, I want to do this. And she's like, here's how we're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> our dynamic. It's a good dynamic. There's a lot of yeah, reigning yeah. her in and being like, <laughs> honey, just focus on this. I'll deal with it. And that's just the nature of director producers. I'm sure Bryce would say the same if he, if he was joining us uh, yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but that's a, no, that's a very good little tease uh, for the audience to look forward to. Maze of the Machiavellian Minutes are coming November? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what date to look forward to. Oh, Honestly, yeah. don't know either. I, I believe it's November, <laughs> October, October, sometime yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, Stay tuned. We'll... We'll post about it. Yeah. Um, speaking of posting, just uh, seeing as we're coming to the end, did you want to plug some social medias for yourselves and for the uh, the Maze of the Machiavellian Minotaur as well? Uh, well, the maze. the maze. So we've got the Facebook, which is, I think it's tag is M Ma- MM Minotaur Mm -hmm. and I think the Instagram is the same (laughs) I'd have to double check but um, for myself um, I've got my own Instagram and Facebook for my Cloudy Productions which is at SIT Cloudy Productions and um, usually whatever I'm doing at uni I post on there so if, if you can't find the Minotaur just go to mm-hmm. SIT Cloudy <laughs> Productions. I'll have posted about it being like, come see my Minotaur show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just Cindy Lee. Yeah. Anywhere in there, I've got a com- couple of fun little accounts. So. Oh, sweet. Very nice. Sandra, did you have a, one more thing you wanted to say? Sorry? We're missing your signature segment. My signature segment? Unfortunately, we won't have time for my signature segment uh, today. Oh. Uh, that is The Future is Looming, which we talk about what you're going to do for the future. Oh, um, you know what? I'm okay. You're right? No? <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I usually put people on the spot and ask, what's your plans for the future? Might be like a guidance counselor. Sydney. Is that what you're looking for? Oh, that's, that's the scoop. That's the inside scoop this <laughs> that's week. That's all we'll leave you with. Yes, <laughs> Well, uh, so we've come to the end of the show. So thank you very much for joining us uh, today. It's been lovely having you. Thanks for having us. Sandra, thank you for co-hosting. Okay. Thank you for listening, viewing, however you see this thing. Please like, comment, and subscribe if it's on YouTube. Give us feedback uh, on any form of social media. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Film School Chronicle. <laughs>